I'm heading to a berry farm in Nika, around half an hour from Nipaluna Hobart. Despite being relatively close to the city, Wolf's Berry Farm is in a little rural hamlet nestled on the foothills of Konanyi, Mount Wellington. This fourth generation family farm is a bit of an institution around here. They've been growing produce in this part of the world for over 150 years. Peter Cundall even visited the farm in season one of Gardening Australia. Good boy. Every now and then, I get this overwhelming, ancient, ethnic craving for gooseberries, of all things. I love them. So today, more than 30 years later, Hello. I'm heading back to the wolf's place to see what's growing. <laughs> <laughs> and then you start, and then you start swearing. <laughs> These days, Tom Wolf and his uncle Tony run the farm. In a nod to the family's German heritage, the farm has always grown a lot of old world varieties of European fruits. Now, I haven't grown any um, gooseberries before, but should I be? Yes, yes, they're good, they're good hardy. This variety, leather jacket. Uh, you only get just a little tinge of red, but they stay yellow. Ah. Whereas the crown bob here, he'll go really ruby red. Yeah. And then they become sweeter, and, you, and it makes it even better for, for cakes and that, because you've got that lovely colour. Yeah. And, and then you can have the, these ones, which are a little bit sour. They're what my grandfather planted uh, in early in the piece, and, uh, and my brother and I kicked it on for my father, and, and here they are. And they're the, my best seller. Yeah, and they're really hardy and quite easy to grow. Exactly. Yeah, yes, that's fantastic. Yeah. So yes, they're hardy and good. So yeah. every backyard should have one. I'm convinced. I will have some. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a pretty strong family connection to run of, um, across generations. What's it been like to pick up where your, your, your parents have left off? You know, it's been very interesting to not only now be working with Tony, our relationships change. You know, we, we resist my uncle now in ways he's my business partner. Uh, we have to do things together and um, overall we, we get on pretty well. We don't butt heads. Not too much. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. We lost my dad. Um, dad and Tony ran the place, um, uh, the generation before us, and it was pretty interesting. We lost dad pretty suddenly to sort of be, I guess, thrust a little bit into that. But I think what's been really beautiful is this is how much we've sort of rallied together. This is not the biggest place. There's bigger farms producing more fruit, but I think what's very special about this place is the history and the family connection. And um, I think we've got through it all together. You know, we've got through the grief and the sadness and we've come out the other side and we're still here. And um, it's, it's been a really good thing, you know. You can't tell a story about this family without also talking about music. Each generation has balanced their work on the farm with a love of music. His dad's band once supported ACDC, and now Tom and his brother Nick are often on tour with their country band. Is it a wee field behind a fence line? A 12 gauge pepper on a road sign? Is it a dirt road? We're very proud of where we're from, proud of who we are, and we draw upon that and sing about that a lot. A big album for us was an album called Country Heart, and that was sort of written after we lost Dad, and I think um, we really drew upon this place, you know, and the wonderful memories of growing up and the fruit seasons and working with Tony and Dad and picking, and even though we were working, we were together as a family, you know, and I think um, we've taken that family unit, that bond, into what we do with music. It's the song of all its parts That's why it makes a country heart We're so lucky we get to go away and travel and, and do these things, but coming home, you realise we live really in the best place in the world and it's very special. I can see some pretty gnarly thorns down here, Tony. Should I be worried? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they get the back of the hand, not yeah. nice. So how you pick them is to uh, grab the uh, branch like that. And I pick them towards the middle of the bush. Yeah. Because if one, if you grab them, as you can see, they're 
angled to the middle of the bush, so you're picking him away from the thorn. Hmm. So if you pick him that way, obviously it's going to grab you. And they're rather nasty. Yeah. Yes. But they're really lovely fruit, though. Mm. Um, people like eating them. Sour, green, and they make a magnificent uh, gooseberry pie. Ah, oh, I can imagine. With you some... must eat very well here in berry season. <laughs> uh, well, actually, you're quite sick of it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. These ones are Yosta berries, a thornless hybrid that combines the flavours of gooseberries and black currants. As with raspberries, make sure you prune off the old canes because new growth will provide the fruit. Tony prunes off old canes and aims for a vase shape for better airflow and easier picking. They grow prolifically, so Tony says it's really important to keep on top of pruning or they'll become a thicket. These Logan berries look a bit like a, you know, blackberry slash raspberry. Yes, yes. When they get going, they're really purpley colour. They go really deep purple. Mm. Beautiful flavour, very lush. And I can see you've trained them all horizontally. They're nice and waist high, mm -hmm. so you can pick them easy. And you very carefully wind them around the string, so as if they stay there. And I have been using uh, uh, bits of flax to, to fix them there. And then they'll grow lovely and lush and make the most beautiful juice and jelly. Yum. Well, that should be good now for, yeah. the, for the season ahead. Perfect. All they've got to do is ripen up. Yeah, come on, Samar. Come on, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> That's why you don't want them too lofty. Yeah. So how old do you reckon this tree is? This little tree would be somewhere around about 30 years old, I should imagine. Yeah. These small cherry trees are Kentish cherries, an heirloom variety from England with bright red skin and pale flesh, great for jams and cooking. Here at the farm, they keep the trees pruned low, otherwise the tall crown can get lanky and fragile. These raspberries are from a hundred year old stock and used to cover large parts of the hillside behind me. They were planted by Tony's grandparents, Tom's great grandparents, and they are a wonderful reminder of just how long the Wolf family had been harvesting from this farm. While we don't produce as much fruit as what we used to, what we are really proud of is everything we do grow, we sell. In fact, we could probably grow and sell more. The demand is still there, which is lovely. And we either sell it here in our shop or we take it to farmer markets. And then what we don't sell, we, we turn it to jams and chocolates and we sell online and, and, and ship it across Australia. So it's really wonderful, really wonderful that we're managing and we're keeping it going and we're keeping this, this family tradition alive. Keeping the dream alive. Keeping the dream alive, that's right. <laughs> What's it like to see your kids or your nephews and your nieces just thriving at home but also beyond and choosing to come back? It's very, very lovely. Yeah. Very, feel very proud. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Don't cry. <laughs> and now Tom and his wife Ellie are giving another generation the chance to fall in love with this beautiful place. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. There's not many people that have a property that's been in the family for this many generations, you know, and um, like all these things, the easy thing to do would be maybe sell, subdivide and go live in the suburbs, but this is um, history, this is our family and this is our little piece of the world that we want to keep going for our for our next, for our next generation. Yeah. <laughs>